I was, I, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a Christian. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a globalist, but, um, well, that's the same you know, thing couple, <laughs> in some couple, ways. Well, you know, it's developed <laughs> from it, but it's, it's a, it's a heresy. And, uh, you know, one, once I was, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, you know, I'm not really a, like, a football fan or anything, but I found myself watching the Super Bowl, uh, you know, halftime show and there was a certain female performer, um, you know, in that halftime show. And, um, I realized that, you know, this was, um, like it or not, I was basically looking at a, a very um, impressive and detailed reconstruction of the Whore of Babylon, and um, the, uh, and here are all these all these you know very good uh, Americans out there in their you know conservative parts of America, um, you know which I, I still I have to admit I I think of as the real America only c because it's so foreign to me, um, and here they all are watching the Whore of Babylon on on their. Um, Super Bowl halftime show. I was at a. I think out. I think I know the one you're talking about, but it's everyone. But but I think it's everyone, right? But <laughs> but I think I know the one you're talking about. I was actually at a church at a Super Bowl party at a church, oh and and uh, the whole staff is there, and there's kids playing around, and that's on the big jumbo screen they've got in the rec room or whatever for the whole church and to watch and this. And, 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 and the and kids start kind of to dancing, and then they're like, "Wait, no, we don't dance to that." And it was so confusing, you know. <laughs> and 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 it's it's confusing and disturbing, and yeah. it's like you're you're trying to to trying to sort of. Um, not see this because it's something that's so disturbing that you can't really see it. Uh, now, of course, the same people have to, you know, go and watch uh, the athletes kneeling for the national anthem, um, you know, which maybe can be spun to small children as a sign of respect. I don't know. But, well, the um, difference, you know, the difference also is that, you know, this is both a product of Christianity's impact in the West, but also revolt against it. And it's precisely because those displays of vulgarity are considered to be aspirational, to be considered empowerment. Whereas in the ancient world, they may do those kind of debauched displays of vulgarity, but it was considered, you know, this is for our entertainment and consumption. This is not something to, uh, you know, aspire to be. This is not, of course, they didn't even have an aspirational hierarchical structure of they, moving they, up. They, they did, <laughs> the, you know, even, even before Christianity, I think the pagan Romans uh, felt some uh, shame uh, you know, at the at the sites of decadence. I mean, you know, right. let's not forget that the Romans began as this very, you know, extremely, I mean, our word virtue, of course, you know, comes from the Latin word virtus, which means something else uh, slightly. But, you know, they had, they were a very, uh, they were certainly a very moral people mm -hmm. in 300 BC, not so much 300 AD. And so what you're seeing, it's interesting because, you know, you look at this and you're like this this curve and you're like okay there's there's a telos here mm -hmm. um and what you're actually seeing if you could separate the curves of sort of human virtue and technical capacity you know one extra one thought experiment that i like is to say okay um, you know, let's let's admit that it's possible that your great grandparents were better people than you on average. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously it depends. But let's take America in 1920 and get a time machine and we're going to teleport the America of 1920 completely intact somewhere into an unoccupied part of the South Pacific in 2020. Mm -hmm. OK, what happens? So you have all these people, uh, they don't have great technology. How long does it take them to basically download Wikipedia and catch up on their like chip fabrication? Mm -hmm. Probably not very long. How long does it take for them to just kick our asses in every possible direction? Not long at all. I mean, you've seen film from that period. You've seen the, you know, the people in the streets, you've seen photos, you've seen like, this is a busy America. This is an energetic America. This is, you know, uh, yeah, they've just come through, through a war. There's various economic problems, but you know, this is a country that could kick China's ass. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, today, of course, our ass is getting kicked by China in, you know, not militarily, but certainly in the, in the domain of economic war. Mm -hmm. And so you're like, you're looking at this and you're like, no, actually there's been a very real degeneration in the quality of, in the human quality of this country. Um, even, you know, setting just, you know, even just counting the descendants of people who were there at that time, um, you're like, yeah, you know. 
if I were building a country, who would I draft? Would I draft you or your grandparents? Well, mm -hmm. frankly, I'd probably draft your grandparents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and that's but, that's a mm -hmm. but some sorry. of those but some of those standards that you're judging the difference are based on more classical standards, right? Would oh, you say sure? Nietzsche, sure. I mean, not Nietzsche. I don't want to go there for, but you know, it's kind of a little bit Nietzsche yeah, you're yeah, talking the, like. I, you know? I'm I'm uh, the standards that I'm using are the standards of by which humans, you know, were judged for, you know, thousands of years. Right. Um, and so when you see those standards change, you're like, okay, you know, are these new standards, you know, better standards? Uh, do they work better for people? Uh, are they more successful in, you know, objectively in any way? No, well, you know, maybe I'll con consider using the old ones. Moreover, I don't know uh, how much exposure you have to... Um, to science, but um, you know, in the principles of the philosophy of science, one of the big principles is when you do an experiment, you need to evaluate the results of the experiment by standards that were set before the experiment. Mm -hmm. Because if you ba otherwise, you're basically shooting at a barn. You're you're performing what's called the Texas sharpshooter fallacy because you're shooting at a barn, looking at the holes, and then drawing a bullseye around the holes. Mm -hmm. um, and that's not that doesn't show that you were shooting accurately. And so, like the you know the phrase the American experiment has been frequently used throughout American history. Mm -hmm. um, in the early part of the 20th century, people used to talk about the Soviet experiment. Uh, I think we've seen the results of that experiment. Um, and, um, you know, the great experiment of 20th century governance, I think, has not produced anything like the results right. that it expected. And you have to basically say, wow, what would people of 1920 think of what we've done here? And not I very think the good. Is, yeah. yeah, you know, I, I had an I had an interesting interaction once. I don't know how many, you know, military uh, you know, listeners you have or people from that culture, but I imagine there's one or two. Um so uh, General McChrystal, who was the uh, commander in Afghanistan for a while, um, who was kicked out by uh, you know, Rolling Stone basically. Um uh he was kicked out by hit piece in Rolling Stone, but he was he was a special forces veteran. You know, very capable guy. And mm -hmm. uh, after his ejection, uh, he, you know, went around doing lectures, as is the custom. And he came to a, a venture capital firm in San Francisco and gave a lecture. And, um, you know, I happened to be sitting in the audience. So there's about 50 people there. And, um, you know, it's kind of stock lecture. And at the end of the lecture, uh, you know, I raised my hand and I asked what I think is going to be a question that will just, like, totally wipe this guy out right so uh you know I, and i get called on and, and I, I raise my hand and my question is so you know here you are in this part of the world that has seen a lot of um you know previous western attempts um at imposing governance on it and you know here you are you know you're fighting in in what's basically you know part of the Indian world. Mm -hmm. And so you have all of this experience from the British Empire of people who tried to do, you know, exactly what you were what you're trying to do here to pacify these kinds of people. Um, what so what do you think, General McChrystal, um, that, um, you know, an Indian district commissioner from, you know, 100 years ago would think about how we'd done in Afghanistan? Like, you know, how would they evaluate, you know, our work? And he was just like, yeah, I don't think they think we've done a very good job. <laughs> and I was like, no more questions, you know? And he'd clearly thought about this question, right? Or he was just that smart. And, um, um, you know, but, you know, I, can, I couldn't return that serve, you know? And um, well, the, the, like, but that's a question that's so rarely asked is like, you know, what would the people who actually set up this experiment think of what we'd done? Mm -hmm. How would they change their minds? Mm -hmm. uh, because if they if we say you know oh they wanted this no they clearly didn't um if then we say oh well they wouldn't change their minds we'd be like well they're stupid um and that's a way of thinking that people don't really sort of get into when they're locked in the sort of the latest uh, news cycle <laughs> um, right it reminds me of a, a discussion i had with a friend of mine who's a marine veteran who was over in afghanistan and saw a lot of awful things someone who was a Christian, someone who was a, a big warrior, believer in the virtue of America. And he goes over there and he says, you know, he saw uh, examples in which the military, the soldiers were being used to be protection detail for 
pedophilic warlords. Yeah. Okay. And he saw one of his friends, uh, some of his friends got blown up by a 13-year-old boy who was being exploited by these warlords that our soldiers were protecting so that they could facilitate their trafficking ring. And oh, he yeah, blew up yeah. his friends. And think about the mind screw that that does, right? I mean, your oh, friends yeah, are killed yeah, yeah. by a 13-year-old who's angry because you guys are basically in, uh, acting as Jeffrey Epstein's uh, uh, personal security detail. So he can, I mean, That's right. equivalent. That's right. I mean, it's, it's, it's awful. Straight, it's, it's, it's totally it's horrendous. Of, it's straight out of Apocalypse Now. And somehow, yeah, or David you know, Lynch you, or something, you know. Or it's David horrific. Lynch. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's horrific and surreal and absurd. And here you have these Americans who are basically signing up for this service under the theory that they're, you know, defending America in some ways. And this theory simply can't be like, you can't find anyone who actually believes in that effort. But, you know, it's, um, you know, I hesitate to say, hesitate to say profitable. Um, you know, it's, it has a momentum, it has a bureaucratic and yes, economic momentum of its own. And, and it comes from, and the thing is that when you look, that's another, another sort of good example of how deep the problem goes, mm -hmm. because, mm -hmm. you know, when 9-11 happened, as, as you may recall, um, they, they developed this interesting term, Homeland Security. We developed this Department of Homeland Security. And it sort of caused people to a ask, like, at a certain point, you have this linguistic problem where you have these two concepts. One of them is homeland security, and the other one is national security. And they would appear to be the same, like, linguistically, they're the same thing. But in fact, national security means ruling the world. Mm -hmm. Okay, how, does, how did national security come to mean ruling the world? Um, and again, you have to go back to before the lives of the, those now living. Well, it's the same and, way federalism uh, came to mean nationalism, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. And so, you know, at one point, basically, FDR literally says, you know, um, I forget the exact line. Well, he said, you know, America's frontier is on the Rhine. That was before the war. He denied saying that, but he did, in fact, say it. Um, and then later during the war, he said something like, political events anywhere in the world affect America's national security, right? You know, and so you've basically gone very out. Very insecure. Um, <laughs> very insecure. You've basically gone out, you know, on this somewhat, you know, dubious thesis of this Axis plan to conquer the world, which probably never even really existed, um, even though, uh, you know, those people were just as awful as we said they were. Um, but they were just as awful as we said they were, but they were not at that time trying to conquer the world, mm -hmm. uh, which we basically were. Um, and so we conquered the world and, you know, that created, um, that created a lot of interesting things. Um, it, um, it certainly created, you know, kind of my childhood as an imperial proconsul, you know, I was sort of, I started to realize kind of as a teenager that the purpose of an American embassy in, in a country isn't to sort of relate to it on a peer to peer basis, but actually to to supervise it. Um, and I was like, well, I'm like, wait, you know. Technically, the United States and Portugal are equals. And in fact, we have a treaty that says that if Portugal is attacked, the United States will defend it. But mm -hmm. if the United States is attacked, Portugal will come to its rescue. Right. You know, um, but, you know, this isn't actually the structure. And then you're just like, wait a second, the Soviets claim to have something exactly like this, where they're like, oh, yeah, we have socialist brotherhood between Poland and the USSR. But, uh, you know, it doesn't appear to be entirely completely brotherly. Well, it's this strange um, admixture of Christian universalist zeal mixed with pagan sacred practices. Yes, and it's all yes, mixed together. Yes. And it's all mixed together, and it's basically doing this thing that you can read about in many, many texts before... You know, you read like, you know, Vittel on the Law of Nations and, you know, Vittel will explain to you the concept of a satellite state and he'll mm -hmm. be like, you know, OK, this is a protectorate. This is not a real country because a real country has its own foreign policy and the right to make war. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you've lost the right to make war, you're not an independent country anymore. Right. And I'm like, OK, Vittel is telling me that the United States is a global empire. Um, and and because, you know, clearly it would not tolerate, you know, a. Spain and Portugal making war on each other. But, um, I, but I think I want to go back to you. You compared that sure. Afghanistan, you know, success versus the past. And you said it's not 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 doesn't look as nice as our past. Well, ex, you know. yeah, 
it the 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 thing is i you know um i have i i have a somewhat of a history of being a conservative and a libertarian and um you know in some ways the things that knocked me out of that are sort of most interesting and so to me and so it's like i believed in the war in iraq because i was like okay here's this you know it's just like nazi germany you're going to go in there you're going to take this horrendous political system you're going to clean it up and you're going to turn it into something that roughly resembles new jersey right right um and you know actually it's gone a little bit more the other way new jersey looks a little bit more like iraq iraq does not look anything like new jersey you know and this didn't actually work why didn't it actually work um it didn't actually work because the occupation of Germany, if you look into to the way that the occupation of Germany was done, um, it did not, even though the, the people who occupied Germany had the values, very much the values of the present, the methods that they used were very much the methods of more like the British Empire. And so, you know, if you read the occupational directives in Germany, it's like, don't fraternize with these people. You have to remember that they're a conquered country. They should be fed 800 calories a day. You know, it was almost Stalinist in some ways. It was like this weird mixture of the um, British Empire and of Stalin. And it left no, you know, the U.S. made it very, very clear who was in charge. We were not liberating Germany. We were not, like, restoring it to have its own political destiny. We were conquering it. And uh, and that was very effective, and the Germans were very effectively conquered, and they have been um, very faithful uh, ever since. And, you know, radical, you know, German terrorism has not, not threatened America. Um, and then you come into these other countries, and you can't do that. You have this pretext of, like, oh— we're not conquering you, we're liberating you. We're not here to make Iraq the 51st state or, you know, Kandahar, you know, you know, Camden, New Jersey, you know. Um, um, we're here to help you live out your own destiny, except that it has to be your destiny in the way that, you know, we believe in. And, you know, it's just like, it simply doesn't work. And well, I want to so, explain why it, I think that is. Well, go ahead and finish. I want to try to take a stab uh, Yeah, it. you know, it, 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 simply, it simply doesn't work. And so you have this... Um, strange like the things that allowed the u.s to conquer nazi germany effectively were aspects of the american way of being in the 1940s that if they if we move those into 2020 everyone would be like well that's super nazi you know right. and so you know it had the the let's say not the nazi but the spartan elements in american culture were much much stronger at that time and so, you know, um, certainly the, the Americans who, who went ashore in France were basically like, we're protecting America from a Nazi invasion. They're not like, oh, we're invading Europe so that, um, you know, Europe can have uh, racial and gender equality, right. you know, um, and that, that was not in their minds. And so, in fact, what they did was much more sort of pre-modern than modern. Now we've sort of eliminated all of those Spartan elements from our culture, except right. in various vestigial ways in the military, and we find that it just doesn't work. So, um, so there's, here's my, 